It was Africa that moved me because it was Africa that always uh, sang songs to the wind, to the rain, and to storms, uh, whether it was to the great Shango and uh, Steal Away Home, or uh, uh, to Oya, the great wind goddess. And there was one to Oya that really struck me as a child. I didn't understand it until about 10 years ago when I really recognized the war on the environment that I thought my father and mother were, were, were crazy when I was a child and they were talking about, you know, everything from charcoal for water to not breaking a limb off of a tree unless you were prepared to plant five more. But oh, y'all would do her thing. And she would say, oh, the wind, oh, the wind don't let her blow. Oh, the wind, my God's gonna hold the wind. Oh, the wind is going to let her blow. Now that we're in this crisis and the potential for losing the sun, which keeps the planet in place, the potential for losing the great wind, howling winds that move about us, sometimes quiet winds. We are in an age of species lethal, the weapon of species lethal. In an age when we are challenging the very planet on which we live and all of the resources, the natural resources, because those are the only resources ultimately that keep it in place. So in an hour like this, we need to stop and hold our breath for long enough to begin to appreciate the planet itself, a planet that has not opened its bowels for billions of years so that life might have a chance. And we challenge that very foundation of the mother planet. We can dream about Mars and the moon. We can dream about Venus and other places. We can dream about fresh water flowing in rivers somewhere. But ultimately, this is the bird in the hand. And I'm not talking about the hands of Gillibrand who kills birds. And I said that with all seriousness. We have a senator who kills birds. I come back to that. We are talking about the planet. The planet which provides us with life. It's not always easy. My father would always say, Mother Nature is not always kind. So we would have bad seasons. I grew up on a farm. You about figured that out by now for the first 15 years of my life in and off the farm. But I always appreciated the fact that if we work with nature and not against nature, if we work with the water, so if you go down there where my great grandfather and grandfather had all of this raggedy land in Mississippi, the one thing you will notice is that there's not one erosion line because you don't work against mother nature. Water seeks its course and you make sure that it takes its course. These are just the simplistic things, right? The things we found so simple then are so complex and complicated now. As I make a path for the United States Senate, I am not just running to get an office. I am running to build a platform for the 21st century, a freedom agenda with an economic bill of rights. An agenda that says, in the terms of energy, we got plenty of it. All we need is the common sense to be able, one, to revisit high school curriculum and say that we want to do what? We want to make sure that every child that leaves the 12th grade leaves with the skills, the tools, the knowledge to be able to feed, clothe, and house themselves. That means returning agriculture back to the curriculum. Not just because it provides food, but because it provides all the things that we need in this life. I call agriculture the science of life. Because everything that we need is housed there. We never had needs when we were in the woods in Mississippi. We were the mothers of recycling. We struggled for water all the time, but we always figured out a way. I remember my dad had a little old stick with some points on the end. 
And he be walking around with his stick. You know that darn thing works sometimes. But not always. But we struggle at ways of not only finding water, but making sure that it was brought up appropriately, not just anyway. You didn't dig a hole anywhere for water. You didn't plant a toilet on the hill because what? It endangered and your water that ran at the bottom of the hill. So you knew where to put the toilet. Just simple things of like back to agriculture, back to talking about making sure that every high school in New York City is partnered with the community and families, partnered with small businesses, and partnered, partnered with the farm community outside of the city. And that we need to buy that land and begin to work with farmers. I'm talking about small farmers now, I'm not talking about Monsanto farmers. I'm not talking about farmers that are dealing in fracking. We're not talking about those farmers. Because if you look at the farm bill, you will note one thing, 100 billion, 100 billion across the next 20 years. But who will the money go to? It's not going to the small farmer. It's not going to the small family farmer, or for that matter, to the middle family farmer. It's going to big farmers and corporate farmers. Who are going to do what? Work against the planet. We're talking about working against the planet, working against life itself. That's where it's going to go. So fracking will go forward. So when we go back and begin to look at high schools, if we begin then to set up an appropriate curriculum, a curriculum of human living that includes agriculture, we will be able to ask our youth to build roads and bridges and create the jobs for mass roads and bridges, so a mass population of workers going into the workforce. 